Hi everyone, I'm back to read the next Josefina story. This is book four called Happy Birthday Josefina and it is set in 1824 and I will go ahead and read the inside of the book so we can see what this one is about. Happy Birthday Josefina, a springtime story. Josefina is pleased and proud when her godmother, Tia Magdalena, asks for her help with springtime chores. Tia Magdalena is a respected healer in the village, and Josefina hopes very much to become a healer, just like her someday. Then one afternoon at Tia, De uh, Tia Magdalena's house, while helping her godmother, Josefina makes an awful mistake that shatters her hopes. She's sure that Tia Magdalena will never teach her now. But when Josefina visits her Pueblo Indian friend, Mariana, a terrifying adventure shows her just how much she's already learned and teaches her something important about herself. Josefina's birthday becomes a celebration of bravery, hope, and second chances. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started with chapter one. Okay, just to review the characters in our story, we have Papa, Josefina's father, who guides his family and his rancho with quiet strength. Josefina, a nine-year-old girl whose heart and hopes are as big as the New Mexico sky. Anna, Josefina's older sister, who is married and has two little boys. Francisca, Josefina's 15-year-old sister, who is headstrong and impatient. There's Clara, Josefina's practical, sensible sister, who is 12 years old. Tia Dolores, Josefina's aunt, who has lived far away in Mexico City for 10 years. Tia Magdalena, Josefina's godmother, a respected healer, and Mariana, Josefina's friend, who lives in the nearby Indian Pueblo. Okay, so some new characters. Chapter one is called Spring Sprouts. Josefina loved spring. She loved the way it came swooping in like a bird on a breeze. She loved the way it woke the earth up from its deep winter sleep and made the rancho a busy, lively place. Baby animals were born in the spring. The sun stayed longer in the sky and there were small green surprises here and there where things were beginning to grow. Just now, Josefina had a surprise to share. She swung open the door to, a, to the weaving room and poked her head inside. Tia Dolores, she said eagerly, please come with me. I have something wonderful to show you. Tia Dolores looked up. The, the wind through the open door fluttered the pages of the ledger book, which was on her lap. Josefina saw that Papa was in the weaving room too. He, he was counting finished woven basket, uh, blankets and Tia Dolores was writing the numbers in her ledger with her quill pen. Oh, forgive me for interrupting, Papa, said Josefina. Well, said Papa cheerfully, I'd like to see something wonderful too. I suppose our counting can wait, don't you, Dolores? Of course, said Tia Dolores, putting down her pen. Papa made a little bow from the waist and held out his hand toward the door. Tia Dolores swept by him and they both followed Josefina as she walked quickly across the courtyard to the back corner. Just look, said Josefina. She knelt down and lifted a handful of dead leaves. Underneath, skinny yellow green sprouts were sticking up out of the soil. Josefina lifted another handful of leaves and then another, and every time there were green shoots underneath. Sprouts everywhere, she said, more than ever before. Pretty soon the whole corner will be full of flowers. See it will, agreed Papa. He sounded pleased. He put his hand on Josefina's head and sm smoothed her hair. Tia Dolores knelt down too. Josefina loved the way her aunt never minded getting dirt on her skirt or her hands. The sun shone on Tia Dolores' dark red hair as she bent over the sprouts. 
Josefina knew Tia Dolores was pleased too. These sprouts were a promise kept. Josefina's mama had planted the flowers in the corner, and during the year after mama died, Josefina had cared for the flowers as well as she could. Then last fall, Floricita, the meanest goat in the rancho, had torn up the flowers and eaten every last one. Josefina had thought mama's flowers would never grow again, but Tia Dolores had promised that they'd be all right. Now she turned and smiled at Josefina. Didn't I tell you, she said, flowers with roots as deep as these can survive a lot, even a visit from Floricita. Josefina grinned. I'm still going to keep Floricita away from them, she said. Don't worry, said Papa. Floricita will be too busy to bother your flowers this spring. She's going to have a baby very soon. Oh, no, said Josefina, pretending to groan. I hope Floricita's baby isn't like her. I don't think I could stand two horrible goats trying to bully me around. Josefina laughed along with Papa and Tia Dolores. She used to be afraid of Floricita. She wasn't the least bit afraid of the goat anymore, but she didn't like her the least little bit either. It was cool that night and Josefina was glad she had left a blanket of dead leaves spread over the sprouts to protect them. And she was glad she had a blanket of woven wool spread over her lap, though the family Sala was warm. Josefina and her sisters, Anna, Francisca, and Clara were sewing, bask uh, were sewing blankets. Woven material came off the loom in narrow strips, which had to be sewn together to make one wide blanket. Josefina made her stitches long and straight. All sisters were good at sewing blankets. They'd sewn many since the fall. Tia Dolores was adding numbers in her ledger. After a while, she paused and asked, Josefina, your birthday is coming soon, isn't it? See, si, said Josefina, I was born on March 19th, the Feast of San Jose. When Mama was alive, we always had a celebration, said Francisca. She was Josefina's second oldest sister, and she loved parties. Well, I think we should have one this year, too, said Tia Dolores. The sisters looked up, delighted. After all, we'll have several things to celebrate. Tia Dolores went on. Is the feast of San It's the feast of San Jose. Josefina will be ten. Spring will be here, and Tia Dolores smiled as she said, God willing, we should have quite a lot of new sheep by then. I've added the figures. We've made 60 blankets. That's enough to trade for 90 sheep, 45 ewes, and 45 lambs. That is good news, exclaimed Josefina. She and Francisca both put their sewing aside and went to look over Tia Dolores' shoulder at her ledger. Anna, the oldest sister, murmured a prayer of thanks. Clara, who was next to Josefina in age, calm, calmly continued to sew. It's good, said Clara, but it doesn't mean we can stop making blankets. We'll need them to trade for more sheep. Oh, ba ba ba! Francisca bleated at Clara. Don't be so tiresome. We all know that 90 sheep aren't enough to replace the hundreds that Papa lost in the flood last fall, but it's a good start. I think we should be very proud of ourselves. 60 blankets is a lot. I know I worked hard on them. Anna, Clara, and Josefina glanced at each other and then burst out laughing. Francisca complained more than anyone else about working on the blankets. Now she made it sound as if she'd been responsible for them all. At first, Francisca scowled at her sister's laughter, but in the, a moment, she was laughing at herself along with them. All right, all right, she admitted grudgingly. The, the rest of you worked hard too. We might not have any blankets to trade if it weren't for Tia Dolores, said Josefina. It was her idea to turn blankets into sheep. All the sisters nodded and looked at their aunt with fondness. After the terrible loss of the sheep, Tia Dolores had suggested that she and the sisters and the other workers on the rancho 
weave the wool they already had into blankets and trade them for sheep. Now, just when spring lambs were beginning, were being born, they had 60 blankets to turn into sheep. Papa will be pleased, said Anna. When do you think he'll go to the Pueblo to trade the blankets for Esteban's, Esteban Duran's sheep, asked Josefina. Esteban, Papa's great friend, was a Pueblo Indian. Soon, said Tia Dolores. She smiled over her shoulder at Josefina. Maybe you'd like to go with him. Tia Dolores knew that Josefina loved to go to the Pueblo and see her friend Mariana, who was Esteban's granddaughter. May I find Papa right now and ask him? Ask him, Josefina said. See, si, said Tia Dolores, who always understood Josefina's eagerness. Go wrap your rebozo around you. It's chilla, chilly. Gracias, said Josefina. She gave Tia Dolores a quick hug and pulled her rebozo up over her head. She was just about to hurry out the door when an idea stopped her. Tia Dolores, she said, won't you come with me? You should be the one to tell Papa about the blankets and the sheep. Tia Dolores started to say no, but Anna and Francisca chimed in together saying, go on, it's your news to tell. Very well, laughed Tia Dolores. She put her sewing aside took Josefina's hand, and together they went out into the cool spring night. They found Papa in the goat's pen. He was sitting next to one of the goats with a lantern at his side. He glanced up when they came in, but he didn't say anything. Papa, Josefina began excitedly. Tia Dolores has some good news for her. Josefina stopped. She realized that the goat next to Papa was Floracita. But she had never seen Floracita like this. The goat was laying on her side, hardly breathing. Her eyes were shut. Papa, asked Josefina, what's wrong? Floracita had her baby tonight, said Papa, but she's too weak to nurse it. I don't think she'll live. Josefina looked down at her old enemy, Floracita. Living on a rancho, Josefina had seen many animals die. She knew better than to think of the animals as anything more than useful and valuable property. Still, as she looked at Floricita, the goat who had bullied her and poked her and torn up Mama's flowers, somehow she just couldn't help feeling sorry for. Can't we do anything, she asked Papa. I don't think so, said Papa. Josefina let go of Tia Dolores' hand and knelt next to Papa. She stroked Floricita's side but the goat didn't move or open her eyes. Her breathing grew slower and slower until at last it stopped. Floricita was dead. Josefina sighed. Poor Floricita, she said softly. Then she remembered something important. She turned to Papa. Where is Floricita's baby, she asked. Papa lifted his serape. Cradled in his arm was a tiny goat. Oh, gasped Josefina, pulling in her breath. Tia Dolores gasped too and sank down on her knees behind Josefina. Very gently, Josefina reached out and touched the goat's silky little ear. The goat turned her head and muzzled the palm of Josefina's hand. Oh, Josefina said again. The goat opened her eyes and looked at Josefina and her eyes and Josefina had to smile because her yellow eyes looked just like Floricita's, but without the evil glint. Suddenly, Josefina knew what she must do. Please, Papa, she asked, may I take care of Floricita's baby? Papa's kind face was full of concern. The baby is very weak, Josefina, he said. It isn't easy to care for an animal this needy. I think you might be too young for the responsibility. I'm almost 10, said Josefina. Please let me try. Still, Papa hesitated. You must realize, he began, then he stopped. Tia Dolores put her arm around Josefina's shoulder. Then in a gentle, then in a gesture so swift, Josefina thought she must have imagined it. Tia Dolores touched Papa's hand. Papa looked up at Tia Dolores and Josefina saw that his eyes had a question in them. Tia Dolores nodded. 
She seemed to know what Papa had sta started to say, and she was encouraging him to say it. Papa spoke slowly. You must realize there's a good chance the baby won't live, even if you do care for her, he said to Josefina. Think how you'll feel if you become fond of the little goat and then she dies. Josefina understood. Papa was afraid her heart would be broken as it had been when Mama died. And for a moment, Josefina was afraid too. But then she looked at the little goat and all her troubles fell away. I have to try to save Florecita's baby, Papa, she said. When any of God's creatures is sick or weak, we have to try to make it better, don't we? She held out her arms to the goat. Please, Papa, she said. Papa sighed. Carefully, he put the baby goat into Josefina's arms. She held the soft, warm body, nestled close to her chest, and rubbed her cheek against the goat's fur. The baby goat gave one small bleat, closed her eyes, and went to sleep as if Josefina's arms were the safest place in the world. Take her back to the house, said Papa, and keep her next to the fire. I'll bring some milk. She's too weak to nurse from one of the other goats. You'll have to teach her how to drink. He stood up and looked at Josefina, holding the helpless sleeping goat. She's yours to care for now. I'll take good care of her, said Josefina. I promise. That's Florecita's baby, Francisca asked. She's such a sweet little thing. Very little, said Clara. Puny, really. It's going to take, it's going to be a lot of work and worry to make that goat healthy and strong. The poor motherless baby, said Anna tenderly. Josefina's sisters were gathered around her, staring at the baby goat which was now awake in her arms. Tia Dolores poured the milk Papa brought into a, a bowl and placed it on the hearth. But when Josefina put the goat next to the milk, the little animal didn't seem to know what to do. Here, said Josefina. She dipped her finger in the milk and then held them up to the goat's mouth. At first, the goat seemed too weak even to open her mouth, but then she sucked the milk off Josefina's fingers. That's it, said Josefina. That's the way. Patiently, Josefina dipped her fingers in the milk again and again, feeding the little goat almost drop by drop. Josefina liked the tickling feeling of the goat's rough tongue on her fingers. She was sorry when the goat fell asleep again before the milk bowl was empty. Clara's right. Taking care of that goat will be hard, said Francisca. But I hope she grows up to be as big as Florecita not just as mean. So do I, said Josefina, hugging the goat. So do I. That night, Josefina and the baby goat slept on a wide bunk across the kitchen hearth called the shepherd's bed. Shepherds sometimes brought orphaned lambs there to sleep because it was heated by the hearth fire through the night. The little goat slept curved like a cat, her little legs tucked under her body, her bony head resting on Josefina's hand. Josefina woke up often during the night. She wanted to be sure she could feel the little goat's heart beating and the warmth of its soft breath on her hand. The little goat made it through the night. Aww. And before the dawn the next morning, Papa brought Josefina a pouch filled with goat's milk. He attached a rag to the end of the pouch and Josefina held it to the baby's goat's mouth. After licking it once or twice, the goat sucked on the rag and hungrily drank the milk out of the pouch. Look, Papa, said Josefina, isn't she clever? See, si, said Papa. He stroked the goat's head with the back of his finger. Josefina thought the goat was very clever and uh, to have figured out how to drink from the pouch. In fact, Josefina believed that Florecita's baby was a superior animal in every way, even if she was rather small. The baby goat grew stronger as each bright spring day passed. She seemed to thrive on warm sunshine, warm milk, and Josefina's warm affection. It was not long before the goat was following Josefina around everywhere on her quick, sturdy little legs. She's like 
uh, she's like your shadows, poked joked Tia Dolores. And so they all began to call her Little Goat Sombrita, which means Little Shadow. Soon everyone was used to seeing Josefina and Sombrito together all over the rancho. Sombrita trip tropped down the stream every morning when Josefina went to fetch water for the household. Sombrita tagged along while Josefina fed the chickens, which made the chickens cluck and fuss. The little goat chased Josefina's broom as if it were a toy, and sweeping were a game that she and Josefina played with it. She dozed peacefully while Josefina worked in the loom and bleated noisily while Josefina had a piano lesson with Tia Dolores. Josefina loved to look down and see Sombrita's cheerful face raised toward her hoping for a quick pat or hug or a scratch behind one floppy ear. As Sombrita grew more frisky, Josefina had to keep an eye on her all the time. The rancho was a dangerous place for such a small creature. She might be kicked by a mule or stepped on by an ox. Josefina especially worried about snakes. Snakes were just uh, awakening from their winter hibernation, so they were hungry. In the spring, a rattlesnake was quite likely to strike a baby animal like Sombrita and kill her. Josefina kept Sombrito close by, safe from harm. She had promised to take good care of the little goat, and it was a promise she intended to keep. Okay, and that is the end of chapter one. Next time we'll read chapter two. And see you next time.